there! Welcome to the Heritage House. Today we're going to talk about soap and we're going to explore the history of soap and then give you a little bit of the science behind how soap is made. Soap's pretty interesting even though possibly you haven't thought much about soap before. The story I'm going to tell you is actually a legend which means it's possibly all made up completely but it does have some elements of truth to it so we're going to share it with you. We're going to start 5,000 years ago to before people had soap. And in those times, they believed that they were gods that lived in the sky. And when they had an abundance of things, they wanted to say thank you to these gods by having a great big party. They would have a feast and music and dancing. And then at the top of the hill, where the gods were sure to see it, they would burn some of the abundance so that the gods could also enjoy the feast. This is how they thought. They would put meat on the fire and the fire would burn the meat up in smoke and the smoke would go to the sky where the gods lived. It was a pretty good system. And that way everybody could enjoy the feast and the party. But what does this have to do with soap? So here's the part where the soap comes in. Often what would happen after one of the ceremonial parties, it might rain and the water from the rain would get the pile of the ashes and meat grease all wet and then it would end up running down the hill and into the creeks and streams at the bottom. Now that's where in early days ladies used to go to do their wash and they found that on the day after a rain, after a party, the creeks and stream water was full of bubbles and suds and that seemed to work really well when they were washing their clothes at getting all the stains out. They didn't know why it worked that way, but they were curious. So they started walking back up that hill and here's what they found. All the ingredients are right here to make soap. You need rainwater, you need ashes, and you need fat or meat grease. Soon the ladies got tired of waiting for the day after a rain, after a party, to be able to do their laundry. So they started putting these ingredients together for themselves. They would get fats, which would be like oils or lard from meat, and ashes from their fires, and they would put it in a pot full of rainwater and soon they could make their own soap. Now this soap wasn't the nicest soap, as you can imagine, with ashes mixed into it, but they could use it to do their laundry and they scrub their floors. And it'd be nice to say that this is the end of the story of soap, but nothing's ever that easy. So we're gonna pop ahead in time one more time and see what happens next. So for this part of our story, we're going to pop ahead in time 3,500 years to the year 1500 AD, which is our side of the century mark. Now soap had been used off and on up and through then, just like we had described with people mixing it up with ashes in a pot and making their own soap. But at that time, Europe was getting very full of people and there weren't enough resources for everyone to be making soap. The king decided that making soap was illegal. No more soap! The people that were allowed to make soap had to pay such a high tax to the king that the soap became very expensive. And soon only the rich people had soap and the poor people had none. They think during this time period that there were a lot of plagues and illnesses because people just couldn't stay clean and they were very crowded. But as I said, it was a resource issue. The way they were making soap just wasn't a good way to make soap after all. So for poor soap, it was back to the drawing board. So now we're getting to the end of our soap story. We're going to pop ahead 200 more years into the 1700s. By then, science was coming in a long way, and scientists and chemists had determined what it was that actually caused 
all these ingredients to make soap. A very clever scientist found out that if you take rainwater and run it through a barrel full of ashes, the liquid that comes out at the bottom is no longer water. There's a chemical reaction that goes on inside the barrel of ashes that actually changes the water into something completely different called lye. Lye is a very caustic liquid. If you got some on your hands, it would burn your skin. So it was a little dangerous. It's along the lines of acid, but it's at the other end of the pH scale. Now lye might be dangerous and needed to be handled carefully, but all of this is something that you can do as a colonial frontiersman right out the back door of your log cabin. Everybody had access to rainwater, and there were lots of ashes from all the wood fires and cooking fires that they had, and lye was easy to make. It turns out when you mix the lye with fat, it was another great way to make soap. And now the ashes are no longer in the soap, so the soap smells a lot better and is a lot cleaner. You can use soap for all sorts of things now. And they came up with all these different recipes for washing their hands, for washing their skin, for washing their hair, for washing their floors. Soap sort of took off and everybody could make it. You could go to stores now and buy soap or you could make soap and make your living that way. And if we went ahead another 100 years to the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s, factories began to make soaps, and soon soap was all over the place, all over the world. I know these days, we've really been appreciating soap. But I hope too you realize how far soap has come. Thousands and thousands of years in the making. Thank you.